derivative is positive on the interval CB, then you tell me. C is a critical point. The derivative is negative to the left of C, and the derivative is positive to the right of C. Whole class? Yeah. Then, is that what you're saying? The derivative of at C is zero. Um, well, but no, it's not necessarily zero. Well, My assumption is that C is the critical point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm already saying that either, either, either the derivative at C is zero or does not exist. It's not a non-zero number. <laughs> not, yeah, it's not a non-zero number. What? Is that right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's either a zero number or not. Weird. Okay. Um, if the derivative is negative to the left and positive to the right, then f of C is a relative min. Um, and um, all right, so how do you prove that something is a relative min? How would you prove this? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. How do you prove that what is the definition of relative min? What was that? You don't know? We did this like two classes ago. It was like Monday. It was like this week's mean. What does it mean if, something, if there's a relative min somewhere? Callum? That within an interval um, A, B, non inclusive, um, there is a point C that is uh, that's the smallest. Yeah, all I need to do is I just need to show, um, I need to show that there's some interval, show some interval uh, such that, uh, show there's some open interval such that f of c is less than or equal to f of x, right? That's what, if, if I can show that f of c is the smallest one, then I've shown that, it, that it's a relative min. Well, why is that true? We can just break it down from the left and from the right side. So here's a and here's b. Um, so here it is, right? Well, take, first take the interval, um, take the interval, um, Yeah, you pretty much just break it down into cases, right? I'm going to show that this is true for the interval a, b. So if x is on the interval a, b, there are two options. Either x is less than c or x is greater than c. Okay, so case one, x is less than c. And case two, um, x is greater than c. If x is less than c, um, that means we're on the interval, that means that x is on the interval uh, AC, right? So what's the one thing I know about this, about this function on the interval AC? The derivative is negative, right? F prime of x, what I know is that F prime of x, F, F prime of x is negative. So since the derivative is negative, what, what do I conclude? Yeah, what's the one thing we just learned? If the derivative is negative, yeah, then it means that f is decreasing. So if f is decreasing, then what happens to decreasing functions as I move to the right? It goes down, right? So now we say by the definition of decreasing, since x is less than c, I conclude as I move to the right, I must go down. So f of x must be um, greater than f of c. Right? As I move to the right, I go down. And in case 2, case 2 is the case where x is greater than c. Well, if x is greater than c, then that means that x is on the interval cb. You guys with me? Yes. Hopefully. OK, and so what? You finished off. Steven. Prime of x is greater than zero, so mm -hmm. f is increasing. Mm -hmm. So then, by the definition of increasing, um, since x is greater than c, then f of x is on What? Greater than x. X is bigger than c. 
So as I move to the right, I must go up. So f of x must be greater than f. So using the technical definition of increasing and decreasing in the theorem we just proved, what we just showed is in both cases, f is bigger than f of c, right? And so, um, and so, uh, what we've shown is that f of c must be a relative min. What's up? Oh yeah, you guys changed it. No. Yeah, was it you guys? No, it wasn't us. It wasn't. It was between. I'm absent one day and the clock got set to <laughs> real time. Well, it was yeah. it it was just change it back. It's, it's helpful. It's like you know, it's like it sets you like focus. Yeah, right. You don't have enough time. Why do I do that? So I don't know. It's not like you rush. Ten three minutes. No, but you know that it's ten minutes. It doesn't work. Yeah. All right. Um, good. Uh, this is the class where I showed you guys the clip about 11. Was that discreet? No, yeah, that was discreet. Yeah, okay. Um, no. Um, good, 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 good. All right, the first derivative test is like, the first derivative test is like the awesomest thing ever. Um, six numbers, five numbers. Alright, so. Okay, um. We know, I just old outman yawned you. Uh, that should make sense because I'm older. Alright, um, so. Now, we have so much power. Our power is like doubling per day. We now have the power to do just like practically anything. So I mean, everything in your wildest dreams when you were in algebra one, and you just thought, there's a million things I want to know about this function, if only I could know. You now know like just about, yeah, no, more than half, like 98% of them. All right, um, so take some function, f of x equals x plus 2 sine x. All right, now, here's the thing about, um, here's the thing. If you're a pretty smart pre-calculus student, you can kind of figure out many, many, many things, but you just kind of will be like a little bit wrong, slash you're just guessing and hoping for the best. So, please everyone take a minute at your table and promise not to use any calculus. Make a sketch of this function, such, make a rough sketch of this function using like your wits and like possibly things I taught you, yeah. Yeah, using your wits. Like skills, math, knowledge, experience. No, I'm not going to I don't know. Don't you do? Oh wait. Uh, what did, didn't we do bracket with the addition? Yeah, what is that in the beginning with the X's? <laughs> <laughs> what was that again? You kind of say, you kind of say, you know, sine X is between negative two, is between negative one and one. Yeah, I remember that. And then, therefore, 2 sine x is between, uh, is between negative 2 and 2. So what can I say about 2 sine x plus x? It's between, yeah, it's between x minus 2 and x plus 2. And so we've proven that this function has like an envelope, right? That this function is always to be found between x minus 2 and x plus 2. Um, so if I was going to make like a slightly crappy picture of this function, uh, I guess, what should I do? Just like start plotting? Yeah, thanks guys. That's exactly what I'll do. Um, 5, 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and then like, I don't know what to do. So I guess it's 0, 0. At pi over 2, what's it going to be? Draw the envelope. Oh, I should draw the envelope. Yeah, good idea. Uh, I don't know. The numbers work out a little gross. Yeah. Sorry. Why? Sorry. Just because. 
No, I mean, why'd you pause it? Why did I pick it? Yeah. I don't know. So I wasn't planning on doing this graphic part. Um, so the function must lie between these two, and then like at zero, it's zero, and then at pi over two, it's going to be like up at the top, right? The side of pi over two, it's, we're going to land like here, and at pi, it's going to be, um, it's going to land right on the y equals x, right? Uh, so it's going to be like here, and then at three pi over two, it's going to land on the on the lower extremity, right? And then it's going to be like this. So it's going to kind of do this weird sort of like thing, right? This is the line y equals x. This is the line y equals x. I'm just kind of, we're just kind of hacking this out freakout style. This is the line y equals x plus two. This is the line y equals x minus two, right? I think I did it right. Yeah, come, let's get to the calculus part. Good news, I agree. Uh, anyway, do you guys kind of have some vague memory of this? All right, so send deep. Now, suddenly, I can do things I could never do before, like find out what that point is. And like that point, those relative extrema. Let's do it. Who cares? What are you talking about? Um, everyone, this is the greatest thing ever. So, take the derivative. Um, and what is the derivative? Um, how about 1 plus 2 cosine x? <laughs> but? Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, all right, so the question is, um, when is this 0? So find critical values. What are the critical values? When cosine x is negative x. I'll also give you one day. So, 2 pi over 3. Sounds like some of you need to download the Trick Speed Quiz app to play it all day long. Um, negative 2, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Right? Say right. That's what it says in my paper. Okay, so now, oh, by the way, I'm, gonna, I'm doing this whole problem on the interval of 0 to 2 pi. Oh, I should probably give you some directions. The directions that we're, what we're actually trying to accomplish is find all the places on the interval 0 to 2 pi where the function is increasing, where it's decreasing. Find all relative extreme values and uh, prove that they are relative extreme values. Too much work. It is, it, I think it is too much work. Let's just give up. I agree. Yes. yes. <laughs> that was a trick. Of course not. Um, all right. So, what? Taxes or something that's important. Taxes, I get I never pay them for years. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, so here we go. What do I need to do if I want to know when this function is when this function is increasing? When is it decreasing? What do I need to do? You need to make a sine chart, but this is like kind of a hard sine chart, right? It's not just a polynomial anymore. So you have to use your other collection of skills, which we worked on in pre-calc. Um, what I'm going to make is a number line, but it's going to be a um, like number line segment because what I would like to do is to look only at the numbers between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and in order to figure out when this, func when this function is increasing and decreasing, what I really need to do is I no need to know when the derivative is positive, for example, and then it'll be negative everywhere else, right? Okay, so do you guys know what to do? This is like that thing that we did once upon a time. Where we said, all right, when is two? When is one plus two cosine x uh, positive? Oh. 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 oh, oh, yeah, exactly. Draw a unit circle as an aid to determining when one plus two cosine x is positive. Oh. And by the way, the places where it's zero is at two pi over three and four pi over three. So those are going to be like the places of interest. Pretty easy one actually. So it's whenever cosine x is greater than negative a half, right? Yes. Oh. So we draw a unit circle and <laughs> shade the parts of the unit circle where the cosine is bigger than negative a half.
I got that. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yes. Especially if you haven't done it yet, then that's also what you got by default. <laughs> right. Good. So, um, thus, I will now fill out my um, number line. On the interval from 0 to 2 pi over 3, is the derivative positive or negative? Positive. Positive, because my shaded picture was supposed to be a representation of when the derivative is positive. It's just, it's just shaded. So we're positive here, we're negative here, and we're positive, and we're positive here. Agreed? Yeah. All right, and I, thus, thus I can now state true things like f is um, increasing on the interval 0 to 2 pi over 3. Uh, f is decreasing on the interval from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, and f is increasing on the interval from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. Okay, uh, and what that means is, common sense wise, what that means is it must be right here, cha, where there is a relative max, right? by the first derivative test. Okay, but now we have to make sure have, that we use the first derivative test correctly. The first derivative test says, if you have a critical point, and the derivative is negative to the left and positive to the right, then there is a relative min. So some of you just intuitively knew this somehow already on Monday. I think it was my name Busis or someone said, hey, it's just, or maybe it was Mateo said, hey, there's going to be a relative min when the derivative changes sign, right? That's what I said. I know you did. That's why I yeah. just called that out. Yeah. So that is correct. <laughs> now, I said it might have been Mateo. Okay. I take it back. Mateo, you never said anything important. Yeah, it could have possibly been me. I never opened my mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Um, man, Wilds is going to be so much fun. We made the Wilds groups. Oh. This week. Oh, no. It's going to be great. All right. Um, no sneak peek. <laughs> the groups are for everyone's happy. We kind of put everyone like with their who we saw with with their friends. Actually. Wait, we got to, like, except for Kidgel. We had to. <laughs> 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 it's really all. Okay, anyway. You put me with my friends. I don't know who your friends are. I just guess. Yes, you do. Um, so, um, <laughs> who your friends are. <laughs> So, what we will now do is we will justify the existence of these relative extrema. Sandeep, do you believe that there is a relative max or min somewhere? Where? At 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Yeah, specifically at 2 pi over 3 is what? A decreasing... Yeah, relative max. Just say relative max. Yes, um, we think that there is a relative max at x equals 2 pi over 3. We will now justify it with the magic sentence. Um, here is the magic sentence. What, crucially, must we note in order to prove that there is a relative max here? The derivative to the left is negative, positive, positive, and the derivative to the right is negative. So in other words, it's the fact that there is a sign change. So this is exactly what we write. Uh, we say f prime changes sign. from positive to negative at x equals 2 pi over 3. So, by the first derivative test, by the first derivative test, f has a relative max. F has a relative max at x equals 2 pi over 3. Bam. This is what I call the magic sentence. It is with very minor um, changes, more or less exactly what you have to say to fully justify that there is a relative max. There's like a million problems on the AP test that say, prove that the function has a relative max here. And this is what you just have to bust out. You have to take the derivative, make a sign chart, and then state that there is a thing because, because blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, so where else is there a relative extreme? Uh, four pi over three. Four pi over three. It wasn't talked all day. Magna, give me the justification for the relative min. Where is that relative min? Okay. 
Yep. Can you guys handle that? Yeah, I think you can. Bam. Okay. okay. All right. And supposing I wanted to, so now what do I know how to do? I know where the function is increasing, I know where it's decreasing, I know where the relative extrema are, I can prove that. And so really the overall goal of the finding extrema has now been, been accomplished, right? So suppose I also want the max and the min on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So now what, what's the one other thing I have to do? Yeah. Consider the endpoints. So what is f of 0? Zero. What is f of two pi? Just two pi. Um, what is f of two pi over three? Yeah, it's like going to be two pi over three plus. What's the sine of two pi over three? root 3 over 2, so this is going to be like root 3, right? Whatever that is. And what's f of 4 pi over 3? I guess it's like 4 pi over 3 minus root 3? Yeah, minus root 3. All right, so which of these is the biggest and which of these is the smallest? Pi over 3 is approximately 1, so that's like 4 minus root 3. So I want to say that that's like um, like 2.7 or yeah, something. Let's just call it like 2.7. It's not that that's not that wrong. That's 2 plus 1.7. So that's about 3.7. All right? Yeah. I think this is wrong. Did I do subtraction wrong? 4 minus 1.7 would be like 2.3. Anyway. This is like 6.3. Good afternoon, zero. Blazers. So where's the min and where's the max? Important sports announcement. All outdoor games are canceled oh. for today. Our oh. only events okay. are men boys and co-ed volleyball at Springbrook at 5.15 and 7.00. JV and zero. varsity baseball and softball will practice inside at 3.15. Varsity girls lacrosse meet at the team room at 3.15. JV girls lacrosse will not have practice. Be at the field tomorrow by 9.30. Track of practicing uh, inside and meet by the weight room.